With Ultimate, Smash as an esport is growing bigger and bigger every single day. While it's still far away from being something as big as Fortnite, the increasing success is very promising for the future of Smash Bros in their Smash Bros career. Although we can't say it's a safe idea to literally just drop everything and become a Smash esports player, I will say there are a couple roles that you can do very well in the community. Whether you want to be a player, commentator, content creator, or tournament organizer, there's many different routes that you can take to hopefully become one. You'll need to work hard and get lucky, but you too can achieve your Smash dreams. What role do you want to climb up in within the Smash community? Let us know in the comments below, and in this video, we'll be giving you tips and guidelines to help you succeed into becoming a successful player. Especially if your goal is to be a Smash player, the resources on ProGuides.com will help you learn everything you need to know about competitive Smash. From in-depth character guides to courses taught by pro players. Also, our Play of Pros platform will connect you with coaches who can train you to level up in your game. Despite being one of the most prominent roles in the Smash community, succeeding as a player may actually be the most difficult. Fortunately though, this difficulty comes in the form of some straightforward tasks that are very grueling to achieve. This is because playing Smash in tournaments is the most competitive role. For example, if you get 100,000 YouTube subscribers from producing Smash content, you aren't stopping your rival creators from doing the same. But if you place first at a tournament, you are literally erasing any chance that another player has to place first at that same tournament. This also goes for rankings. There will always be only one first place, only one second, etc. There are no ties when it comes to being a player, although that doesn't necessarily mean that two or more players can't have relatively equal success overall. The tricky part of being a player is that a lot of the success comes from doing content creation in conjunction with competing, so we can't really talk about making it big as a competitor without also doing content as well. So let's break down the key goals here for anyone who wants to achieve glory as a Smash competitor. First and most obviously, you have to get good. It's simple on the surface, but there's a ton of depth here. Content creation aside, success as a player comes from winning big tournaments and defeating strong players. When you make it far in brackets, you'll get more and more eyes watching you. This is multiplied for the players who make it into the later rounds of the tournament, where most if not all the matches are streamed. Attention is the key word here. Developing a fan base, building a brand, every aspect of success for a public figure starts with attention. But before we get deeper into this, you might be thinking, wait, what about actually winning prize money from the tournaments? This is of course a big factor as well, but tournament winnings are sadly going to be only a very, very small part of the revenue for high profile players. This is because prize pools and smash tournaments are very small compared to just about any other esport. The entry fee that contributes to prizes is typically only $10 even at major events, with additional pot bonuses only doubling that in pot amount in many cases. To make matters worse, the drop off in winnings is awful for players who don't make top 3 at best. Realistically, if you're able to win the majority of the biggest tournaments held, you could still make a decent living off of prize money alone, but this number still only comes out to a fairly average job, and that's with an insane difficulty of staying consistent in an extremely competitive game. Fortunately, making it far in big tournaments also opens more doors and has more benefits than the prize money alone. Bringing it back to attention, that appeal, and exposure that comes from big wins is going to get you more Twitter followers, more YouTube viewers, and more Twitch subs. This is what sponsors want to see. Sponsorships can come in many shapes and forms, but the fundamental idea is that the sponsor is going to pay their player to promote the sponsor's organization and the brands that endorse them. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just how good a player is that will get them the best deal for a sponsor, but their outreach, their brand, their fan base, it's all together. So again, it all comes back to getting attention. And for a tournament competitor, winning is the first way to do this. We have tons of videos here on ProGuide's YouTube as well as on our website to help you get better at winning, but here are some general tips for doing so. Practice. This one is obvious, but you should get as much practice as you can. Play against different people, preferably offline, learning as many matchups and playstyles as you can. Play in training mode and master every technique, and do all of this as much as possible. Study. There's so much about Smash Ultimate that can be or sometimes must be learned without even playing the game. Pay attention to how your favorite player or the best main of your character plays, and analyze their decisions until you understand their goals in many situations. If possible, record your own gameplay, watch it back with the same intentions so you can take note of any crucial weak points. Pick a top tier. There's nothing wrong with playing any character in the game unless you want to win. If you're serious about competing in Smash and making it far as a competitive player, 
picking a good character is literally the easiest thing you could possibly do to help yourself. Ultimate makes this even easier, as there are tons of really good characters in this game that will fit almost any style and preference. Picking a low tier with the goal of becoming a pro smasher is the equivalent of bringing a bicycle to a NASCAR race. Go to tournaments. Competing in tournaments, however big or small, will help you in many ways. Not only is it additional practice with the added challenge of risk and pressure, but you can begin to gain exposure as mentioned earlier. Even a small local group of players who enjoy watching and supporting your gameplay can be the first step towards building a huge fan base. Travel. The world is taking a break from tournaments right now, but in normal times, traveling to large events carries the same benefit as going to locals, but with the ability to gain fans and make connections with people from other regions. This is also an opportunity to practice with many different players in person, which might be essential for learning some obscure matchups. Winning tournaments is easily the hardest part, and it can be very demoralizing, but it's important to remember that even the best players in the world were just casuals at some point, and they all took many losses along the way to get where they are now. So you understand what it takes to be good at Smash and work your way up in the brackets. Now let's talk about the other half, building a brand. This is extremely important. This is very similar to succeeding in the content creation field alone, but we'll be coming at this from a different perspective as a competitive player. You should absolutely be on just about every social media platform you can think of, but Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram are the biggest in the Smash community. Twitter may not be the easiest way to make money directly, but it's the clearest picture of your fan base and how connected your followers are with you as yourself. Make sure all of your social media accounts clearly display the gamer tag that you use in tournaments, so any prospective fans can find you easily and follow you. Twitter allows you to change your handle and display name at any time, so this is fairly simple, and you can check with a friend to see how easy it is to search for you. If your tag is very unique, it may be fine on its own, but if not, then you may want to have something added to indicate your association with Smash, such as SSB. Creating a Twitter account is just the beginning. Now it's time to improve your presentation. Your profile pic and cover photo should be easily digestible so that viewers can understand what they're looking at and also connect these images with who you are and who your brand is as a player. Next, you need to become active on the platform. Follow everyone you know and tons of fellow competitive players and tweet every single day. This might be the last piece of advice you expected when learning how to be a successful Smash player, but it's very, very important. Try to naturally inject your own personality into every tweet and consider choosing topics that may spark discussion and once again, bring attention to yourself and your brand. We keep mentioning the word brand, and in the case of a Smash player, this is very simple. Your brand is just an overall representation of who you are in any way. This could include something like Nairo's signature glasses, the Buzz's galaxy brain ideas, or even Samsora's head bopping. All of these things are small aspects that people associate with these personalities that they are following. So ask yourself, who are you and what can you add to your social media that represents you in a unique way? Finally, this brings us to content. Content is extremely important because it acts as both an additional source of revenue on its own and it also grows a bigger fan base which attracts sponsors who provide yet another source of income. For competitive Smash players, content usually comes from the form of Twitch streams and YouTube videos. Fortunately, if you already have success in tournaments, you'll have a much easier time getting clicks on your videos and streams. This doesn't equate to instant success, however. With your content, you want to again find the best way to inject your brand into everything. The people coming to see you after watching you play in tournaments will already know how you play, but they may not know much about your personality besides that, and this is where you can really show it. For your Twitch streams, there are two essential factors that need to be displayed, the game and you. This may require an investment in some equipment, but you don't need anything crazy. A computer with a decent processor, a capture card, a microphone, and a webcam will likely be under $1,000 total, and you probably already have at least one of those. This is what your tournament winning should go towards, buying anything essential. Make sure you have good lighting so people can see you on your stream, and now it's time to be yourself. More exciting personalities will typically be more engaging, but you don't want to stray away from your natural self. Find that thing about your personality that brings out the emotes and the laws in the chat. Mesh that with your gameplay and you've got the makings to become a successful Smash stream. With YouTube content, it's pretty similar, but the webcam isn't as important here, as you will be more creative with your content than just playing matches. You have a lot of choices, from guides to meme videos, just make it your own. A simple yet wildly popular way to make YouTube content is just by creating highlight reels of your streams. Pick out the best plays, disrespectful moments, crazy jank, and make a video around 10 minutes long, preferably a little bit longer. This will get your personality across in a fast and exciting video that also directs viewers right to your stream. 
For both Twitch and YouTube, consistency is vital. Try to upload a YouTube video at least once a week and stream at least three times per week, at least three hours per stream, preferably with a consistent schedule. So if you want to succeed as a competitive Smash player, you need to get good and win big, build a brand and a social media presence, and create YouTube and Twitch content that combines your gameplay with your brand. The challenge of the task is quite immense, but plenty of players have done this and many more yet to come. Will you be one of them? What role would you like to learn how to succeed in next? Be sure to comment and let us know. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more from Pro Guides. Hey.